In this world, nothing can be said to be certain except death and taxes. At least that's what Ben Franklin said. We're sure you'd love to hear 50 facts about taxes. Maybe another time. Instead, here are 50 insane facts about dying. Number 50. We've all heard that your hair and nails continue to grow after you die, but is that true? Well, hair and nails do appear to become longer after you die, but it's not because they're still growing. It's likely because the skin around the nails has started to retract. After death, your skin dehydrates, and this causes your soft tissues to shrink. So that myth is just based on an optical illusion. Number 49. A few hours after someone dies, their joints stiffen and lock into place. This is known as rigor mortis. You might have already heard of it, but did you know it's only temporary? It lasts about 72 hours, but this can vary based on body temperature and other factors. Rigor mortis is caused by skeletal muscles partially contracting, and since they're unable to relax, the body becomes rigid for a brief amount of time. Number 48. You may have heard the term the smell of death, but have you ever wondered what that means? When people say that, they're either knowingly or unknowingly referring to a complex mixture of organic compounds. In this case, it would be putrescine and cadaverine. There are two gases that are responsible for that distinctive smell of death, created when bacteria break down the amino acids ornithine and lysine. Number 47. Dead bodies can look like they're covered in soap. This is known as saponification. When a dead body undergoes chemical changes, it can transform body fat into adipocere, which is sometimes referred to as grave wax. It typically happens when a body decays under wet, airless conditions. It's said to have the consistency of semi-hard cheese and a soapy, waxy texture. One famous example is the soap lady who's preserved behind a wooden and glass case at the Mütter Museum. Even though her body was given to the museum shortly after it was exhumed in Philadelphia in 1875, there's a lot we don't know about the soap lady, including who she might have been when she was alive. They do believe she might have been in her late 20s when she died, and x-rays revealed she wore pins that weren't manufactured in the United States until the 1830s, so it's likely she died in the 1830s. The soap man, who also lived in Philadelphia, is kept at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. They believed he was buried around 1800, and his body was discovered while digging a train depot foundation in 1875. What a coincidence! Maybe we should set up a date. Water and alkaline soil might have seeped into his casket, causing the saponification, but unlike the soap lady, he is not on public display. Number 47. Now that we've talked about the soap lady and the soap man, let's look at the bog bodies of Europe. Europe's spongy, peat-covered wetlands provide the perfect environment and conditions to create these bog bodies, bodies where their decomposition is slowed by highly acidic, low-oxygen environments. Some of these bodies found are said to date back as far as 7,000 years ago. It's also likely that many of them were killed during ancient rituals, which might be a preferable option than just dying by drowning in the mud of the wetlands. In 1950, the Tulund man was discovered in Denmark. After analyzing the body, experts believe he died more than 2,000 years ago, but the exact details of his death are unclear. Experts do believe his death was a ritualistic sacrifice to the gods. They also know his last meal was porridge and fish, since the contents of his stomach were preserved. Number 45. Something called necrobiomes can help in determining the time and cause of someone's death. A necrobiome is all of the bacteria and fungi that are found in the remains of a corpse after death. They change in a predictable, chronologically consistent way, which is why it's sometimes called the necrobiome clock. As such, scientists can tell when someone died based on the types of microbes in and around their body. Number 44. Sometimes whether you can be considered dead or alive depends on the state you live in. Brain death is a controversial topic on a personal and governmental level. In New York and New Jersey, if it goes against the family's religious beliefs, they can reject the concept of brain death. Number 43. Mummies were once used as paint dye. If you ever heard of Mummy Brown, you may or may not know how literal that name is. During the 16th and into the early 20th century, the rich brown color that some artists used was created from grinding up Egyptian human and cat mummies. Since it was often transparent, it was used for painting shadows, glazing, and flesh tones. Number 42. There is a place where you're legally not allowed to die. Well, kind of. Longyearbyen is a small settlement made up of around 2,400 people located on the Norwegian island of Svalbard. Many stories about this place mention that it's illegal to die in the settlement, but that is not technically true. The law only forbids you from being buried on the island. 
This is partly because the permafrost wouldn't allow buried bodies to decompose, as well as being a tough surface to dig through in the first place. Once Longyearbyen residents start getting into their retirement age or have serious health problems, they're expected to move to the mainland, where treatment or a potential burial can take place without any complications. There are some very rare exceptions made to this rule, though. If a person has a special connection to Longyearbyen, they can request to be buried in an urn at the local cemetery. Number 41. Human composting is legal in several states. Currently, it's allowed in Washington, Colorado, Oregon, Vermont, California, New York, and Nevada. Return Home is a Seattle-based human composting facility. They use organic materials like straw, alfalfa, and sawdust to turn human bodies back into soil. It's meant to combat the environmental impact that burials and cremations have. You don't even have to live there to take advantage of this somber service. Some have already had their bodies flown to Washington after they die. Number 40. There are human body farms. The University of Tennessee Knoxville's Anthropology Research Facility is known as the Body Farm. It enables researchers to study the science of human decay while also allowing law enforcement agents to train on how to recover human remains at crime scenes. Researchers can also look at corpses at different stages of decomposition, potentially helping future criminal investigations. Number 39. Embalming became popular because of Abraham Lincoln. Have you ever wondered why we embalm our dead? It started during the Civil War. Soldiers didn't want to be buried on enemy soil, and families wanted to give their loved ones a proper burial. Since refrigeration wasn't as widely available as it is today, they had to find another way to preserve bodies that would survive long train rides in the summer heat. Embalming was the solution. It was created by Dr. Thomas Holmes, who became known as the father of embalming. However, it wasn't used all that much outside of the Civil War until President Abraham Lincoln died in 1865. The government had decided to take Abraham Lincoln's body on a two-week national funeral procession. They embalmed his body so he could be taken from Washington, D.C. to Springfield, Illinois. Mourners were in awe of his lifelike appearance, which directly led to the popularization of embalming across the nation. Number 38. Now we know why embalming became popular, we also have to note that it's not really necessary. It's rarely required by law. In California, there's a law that requires bodies to be embalmed, but only if they're being shipped by a common carrier. If there are reasons you can't embalm the body, there are other ways to ship it without breaking the law. Also, while there are a lot of funeral homes who will not do a public viewing without embalming, there is no federal or state law that requires embalming. Number 37. When you're cremated, the average person will produce 3 to 9 pounds of cremains. This depends on the person's age and weight, but it's rare for it to go over 9 pounds. Typically, if it's lower than 3 pounds, the person in question was a child or infant. The cremation chamber, also called a retort, can get as hot as 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit or just over 1,090 degrees Celsius, but even then it'll often leave behind bones that cannot be burned to ash. In some places like Japan, the bones are placed inside of the cremation urn. In Japan's case, the family will pick out the remaining bones with chopsticks and place them in the urn as part of the funeral ceremony. In the United States, the leftover bone will be placed in a cremulator to be ground up so it can be added to the urn. Number 36. During the Victorian era, British families would take photos of the dead. As unsettling as that might seem today, it was a way for them to commemorate the dead. During this time period, Brits would also cut locks of hair from the dead and put them in lockets, rings, and art, as well as make death masks with wax. By the mid-1800s, photography became more affordable and commonly available. This led to Victorian families popularizing memento mori photography. As the life expectancy for children improved, the need for death photography decreased. Number 35. It's common to see death numbers spike around Christmas, the day after Christmas, and New Year's Day. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 93% of deaths are attributed to natural causes. So, why are the holidays so dangerous? Many people put off going to the hospital in order to see their family, and with holiday staffing shortages at hospitals, it's not surprising to hear that the number of deaths spikes around the holidays. Number 34. We've all made jokes about doctors having bad handwriting, but it turns out that joke might have been taken a bit too far. In a 2006 report on U.S. healthcare facilities, it was reported that every year, over 7,000 people die as a result of a doctor's messy handwriting. Thankfully, the rise of digital prescriptions have probably cut down those numbers. Thank you, technology. Number 33. Dead bodies are not inherently a source of disease. It's not unusual for people to worry that they'll become sick after touching a dead body, but this rarely happens. 
you're only at risk of becoming sick if the disease succumbed to a highly infectious disease, like Ebola. Just don't drink water that's had a dead person in it. You could potentially get diarrhea from the fecal matter released by the decaying process of the corpse. The belief that dead bodies are dangerous to the living began in the 19th century when miasma theory gained popularity. It was thought that bad odors carried by the wind or coming from decaying organic matter transmitted disease and infections. Dead bodies notoriously don't smell the best, so it was believed that if you caught a whiff of a decaying body, you were at risk of becoming sick. Number 32. There are people in the United States who have been cryonically preserved after their deaths. In 2014, Alcoa Life Extension Foundation claimed that they had 300 patients frozen in liquid nitrogen within their facility. Those familiar with the TV show Futurama and its main character, who was frozen in a similar manner for a thousand years, might think that we're joking here, but that's not the case. The goal of the company is to freeze its customers until a cure for what killed them is developed. Once that happens, they'll thaw out the corpse and reanimate them. We just hope it doesn't take a thousand years to find those cures. Number 31. You can be cremated in the water. As strange as that sounds, water cremation, also known as alkaline hydrolysis or aquamation, actually exists. The body is placed in a mixture of high heat water and potassium hydroxide. Pressure is then applied, which decomposes the body to its chemical compounds. Water cremation uses far less energy than traditional cremation, and it doesn't produce any emissions like carbon dioxide, making it more environmentally friendly, although it is only legal in some states. Number 30. There are over 200 frozen bodies on Mount Everest. It's not atypical for climbers and Sherpa guides to lose their lives while climbing Mount Everest, and they're usually left where they fell. This is mostly because trying to transport a body more than 20,000 feet down mountainous terrain would most likely lead to the rescue team losing their own lives. It's much safer to just leave the bodies there. Oftentimes, those bodies become so well preserved that they'll even act as waypoints for climbers who make their way up the mountain, such as the famous Green Boots. To this day, Green Boots has still not been identified. Some believe the body might belong to Indian climber Sebong Pajor, who died while trying to climb Everest in 1996. The body is referred to as green boots due to the green coal flack mountaineering boots that are still worn by the deceased climber. Number 29. There have been accounts of people being buried alive. One example comes from the 17th century England, where a woman named Alice Blunden had been knocked out cold after drinking poppy tea, likely due to the drink containing morphine or codeine. Blunden was declared dead at the scene by a doctor and shortly after buried in a local graveyard. Lucky for her, a group of children who were playing by her grave heard some strange noises, and when their schoolmaster checked the grave, they discovered Blunden was still alive. It would take an entire day to dig her out, and she was so close to death by the time they finished digging that they returned her to her grave once again, believing that she had suffocated while they were trying to dig her up. The next morning, it was discovered that she was indeed dead, but she'd also tried to free herself after being buried alive for a second time. The hysteria around being buried alive got so bad that in the late 19th century Germany, over 30 safety coffin designs were patented. While several were built and sold, there's no recorded proof that anyone was saved by a safety coffin. Number 28. The saying of burying the dead six feet under started with the Great Plague. During the London Plague of 1665, gravediggers were instructed to dig down at least six feet deep. We're still not sure why this rule was put into place, but there are a few theories as to why it was implemented. One theory states that authorities believe the deeper graves would keep animals from digging up the plague-infected bodies. Linking to the previous theory, it seemed that they also believed it would prevent the spread of disease. It may have also been to deter grave robbing, but no one knows for sure, though. Number 27. When you die, your body can explode. It is rare, but it does happen. Due to a buildup of gases and fluids during decomposition, pressure can start building up and boom, decaying corpse bits everywhere. It typically happens to bodies in sealed coffins since the gas has nowhere to escape, slowly building up the pressure within the coffin like a pressure cooker. It's not so much a boom, but the lid will pop open. After that, foul-smelling fluid and gas would start leaking out. Number 26. Self-mummification is possible. Typically, it's easier to mummify a body in certain climates like peat bogs, arid deserts, and alpine peaks. However, Japan once had a Shingon sect of Buddhist monks who would mummify themselves. The practice is also known as Soku Shinbutsu, and it could take over three years to complete. Those who completed the ritual were known as Soku Shinbutsu, or a Buddha in this very body. From 1081 to 1903, at least 17 monks were able to self-mummify, 
but it's possible there are more that simply haven't been recovered. They would follow a strict diet, seal themselves in a tomb, and meditate until death. The practice was officially banned in 1897, so the last person to self-mummify, the Buddhist monk Bukai, had done so illegally as he performed the ritual in 1903. Number 25. A burst of brain activity during the dying process might explain why your life flashes before your eyes before your death. You don't need to die to experience this, though. It's not uncommon for people who have had a near-death experience to report their life flashing before their eyes or having an out-of-body experience. In a small study that mapped the brain activity of four people as they were dying, there was a burst of brain activity after each person's heart stopped. A biomedical scientist at the Charlotte Marshall of the University of Liège believes it might be part of the brain entering survival mode once it's deprived of oxygen, as the heart stops beating and thus supplying oxygen to the brain. Number 24. Hearing is believed to be the last sense to go. In a groundbreaking study from June 2020, neuroscientists were able to provide empirical evidence that people are able to hear while becoming unresponsive as they are dying. They were able to measure the brain activity in hospice patients at St. John's Hospital and compare it to a control group of healthy young participants. The study showed that the dying brain responds to sounds even when the patient is seemingly unconscious. Number 23. People used to believe that touching a murderer who was executed by hanging could cure illness. In England from the 18th century until public executions were abolished in 1868, people actively tried to touch the body of the condemned, especially their hand. They believed it would cure a variety of illnesses, including swelling. Number 22. There are some animals that will not die of old age, although other things can kill them. We know of seven types of animals that can live on forever as long as they're not killed by external factors. Jellyfish, lobsters, turtles, flatworms, whales, radiation-resistant bacterium, and the tardigrade or water bear. Number 21. Some animals will grieve just like humans do. Some even hold memorials for their dead. There are at least five animals that are known to grieve – monkeys, elephants, dolphins, dogs, and giraffes. Elephants are even known to cry for their dead, bury them, and pay tribute to their bodies and bones. It's also not unusual for crows to gather around their dead, but not to mourn. They do it in order to find out how the crow died and learn how to avoid their fate. Number 20. In Madagascar, the Marina tribe exhumes their dead every five to seven years to care for them. The ritual is known as Fama di Hana. Ancestors are removed from their graves so that the living can replace their burial garments with fresh silk shrouds. While the bodies are still above the ground, the living will drink, talk, and dance with their deceased loved ones. Before the sun sets, they return the bodies to the tomb. Number 19. Mellification is the process of preserving a body with honey. Herodotus, a Greek historian, claimed the Assyrians would use this method to embalm their dead. There's also a myth that Alexander the Great's body was preserved using this method, placed in a golden coffin filled with honey. It's most likely a myth, but Abdal Latif al-Baghdadi, a medieval physician and historian, claimed to have once found a honey pot in an Egyptian tomb. Allegedly, they found the body of a dead child inside the honey, so preserving the body of a fully grown adult is not fully out of the question. But this method wasn't just used during ancient times. Some of you might have heard of the mellified man, a human mummy steeped in honey. What sounds like it could have been an accidental mummification is actually a story of body donation. According to Chinese medical records, there were men in the Middle East who would volunteer to be mummified in honey in order to create medicine for others. The volunteers would eat honey, drink honey, and bathe in honey until death. They would then be sealed in a stone coffin filled with honey, and it would be left to cure for 100 years. After that, the body would be dug up and turned into medicine. Now, Before you get too excited about having a potentially human-tasting sweet treat, no one can really prove it ever happened. I guess Skittles will have to do for now. Number 18. In some ancient cultures, it was considered respectful to eat your dead. The ancient Melanesians of Papua New Guinea and Brazil's Wari people would eat the bodies of dead relatives out of honor. Number 17. Some people will live with their deceased loved ones for years. In Indonesia, the Toraja people of southern Sulawesi will often treat the dead as just a sick family member. They will regularly visit them, speak with them, and bring them meals. Even after they bury their dead, they do not see them as truly gone. They will carve wooden Tao Tao statues to match their loved one's likeness. Those statues will stand on clifftop perches to watch over the living. Number 16. The death rattle is a common symptom of death. It happens when the dying person can no longer swallow or cough, as well as being unable to clear saliva or mucus from their throat. 
This creates a crackling, wet noise that amplifies as the person breathes. It can sound like moaning, loud gurgling, or snoring, and it typically doesn't cause any pain or discomfort. Number 15. Death masks were once used to commemorate the dead. The masks were created by placing a mold on a dead individual's face made of wax or plaster. Perhaps the most famous example of the death mask being used was during the execution of Mary, Queen of Scots. After the queen was beheaded, a mold was placed on her face and a hand-painted death mask was created in her likeness. Number 14. People can die from a broken heart. Known as broken heart syndrome, or takotsubo cardiomyopathy, this fake-sounding sickness is a very real thing. It happens when the heart experiences a surge of stress hormones that are often the result of an emotionally taxing event. High-stress situations like the death of a loved one, bankruptcy, being fired, public speaking, divorce, or a terminal medical diagnosis can cause you to die of a broken heart. Number 13. In the Philippines, the Tinguan people will dress their deceased in their best clothing, sit them down in a chair, and give them a cigarette. They'll have their dead sit there for several weeks, but don't worry, the bodies do eventually get buried. Number 12. In Ghana, you can be buried in a fantasy coffin. It's a popular custom in Ghana to bury your loved ones in a coffin that reflects who they were. The coffins could represent a hobby, occupation, or other characteristics. For example, a successful businessman might be buried in a Mercedes-Benz coffin. Number 11. In the Victorian era, there were different expectations of men and women for how long they would mourn. Widowers would only mourn for six months or less. Widows, on the other hand, were expected to mourn for two and a half years. Men were often encouraged to remarry more than widows would be. Number 10. On his deathbed, King Charles II paid a great deal of money for a tincture made of human skulls. When he was dying, Charles II paid Jonathan Goddard, Oliver Cromwell's doctor, for the formula of his miracle cure, King's Drops. King's Drops were said to help treat gout and dropsy, among other ailments. The secret ingredient was a powder made from five pounds of crushed human skulls. It really takes alternative medicine to a whole new height. Number 9. Water can speed up decomposition. We've talked about water cremation, but in normal circumstances, decomposition changes happen more slowly in water, mostly due to a cooler temperature and an anaerobic environment. But once you remove the body from the water, the putrefaction process will likely accelerate. Number 8. There's a rare mental condition where people believe they're dead or are missing organs. It's known as Cotard syndrome or Cotard delusion and walking corpse syndrome. While doctors don't know what causes it, it often comes with another brain disorder, like dementia, a mood disorder, epilepsy, and many other medical conditions. Number 7. In Netherlands, Colorado, there's a Frozen Dead Guy Days festival. It's a weekend-long festival that's held in honor of Brito Morstowell, a 110-year-old corpse. It's believed Morstowell was cross-country skiing in Norway when he died of a heart attack. His grandson put his body on dry ice and brought him back to the U.S. in 1989. When his grandson had to leave the United States, his sister kept his father's body cryogenically frozen in a shed behind their house. After she was evicted from the house, Tough Shed would donate a better shed, and Delta Tech would take care of the body. Twice a month, they deliver dry ice to keep the body frozen. At the festival, people engage in coffin racing, frozen salmon tossing, costumed polar plunging, and frozen t-shirt contests. Number 6. One day, social media will have more dead people than living people on it. Researchers at Oxford University have stated that by 2100, there will be around 5 billion dead people on Facebook if the platform survives that long. At Facebook's current rate, dead people will outnumber the living by 2070. Number 5. Around 150,000 people die every day. This total includes all deaths from accidents, illness, disasters, and violence. Number 4. In 897, the corpse of a pope was put on trial. Pope Stephen VI exhumed the corpse of Formosus in order to prop him up on a throne and put him on trial. He had a deacon answer for the corpse since Formosus understandably wouldn't be able to answer for himself. The pope's corpse was accused of violating canon law, perjury, and several other crimes. He was declared guilty, and his status as pope was posthumously taken away. They also cut off his fingers and threw him into the Tiber River. Number 3. Bodies containing a lot of fat are often cremated in the morning while the machine's bricks are still cold meaning they'll be one of the first bodies burned that day. Since their cremation will require a higher temperature for a longer amount of time, those managing the crematorium have to be careful. When heat rises too quickly, black smoke can start clogging and messing up the machine. Number 2. You can get a death erection. It's also known as rigor erectus, 
and it's usually observed in corpses of men who have been executed. It's associated with men who have been killed by hanging specifically. It's believed it happens due to the pressure on the cerebellum created by the noose. Number 1. Let's end on a cheerful note. Bees! There's a European tradition in which bees are told important news regarding the beekeeper's household, like births, weddings, and even deaths. Some people believed that if you didn't spill the tea, the bees would leave their hive, stop producing honey, or die. When Queen Elizabeth II died, we saw John Chapel, the royal beekeeper, tell the bees about her death. Now watch 50 Insane Facts About Pain, or check out 50 Insane Death Row Facts Nobody Tells You.